This week, we look at two styles of opal mining and see how it's done. The first style of mining is artisanal mining, where you use a bucket and a jackhammer or a pick. We were lucky enough for Dave to take us down his mine again to catch up where we were last time and show us a little bit more about what's going on and how to read the ground. Made a liar out of me again. Made a liar out of me again. <laughs> Off their ass and go mining again. Righto. I'm going in. So, but yeah, no, the plans this year. I want to try and finish this claim, get onto one of my other claims. Yep. So, yeah, right, yeah. Get that's, all this, that's all that falling in there. This is sandstone, that's actually the roof. Yep. This part here's the roof that's and also big. the floor. Yep. So I'm digging in through to this area here, okay, yeah, which is cool. part of a fall. Yep. But they dug under the original level. Yeah, okay. And so basically the, the level sitting there, they dug under it. So it's fallen back to its natural roof. Do you reckon they missed the level? I'd say so, yeah. Because oh. they dug underneath it. And so all that level there is sitting in there. That's what a lot of this is too. Under this is all the level. Yep. So I've got to wash all this. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so basically there's a false roof. Yep. So they dug underneath it and left the level above it. So, yeah, right. but yeah, this is all the roots. and. But yeah, we've got to get this out from underground and wash it. Yeah, so well, you've got, to find, you've got to find where it all is big, hanging out. It's there. a big, big job. Yeah, for sure. There's like a little ballroom here yep. that they dug out. Yep. Um, and then they went through to a big ballroom there's then. There's a ballroom there, they must have found something. There. Yeah, well the ballroom back, because it was all done with pick and that years ago. Yeah. This was used to be an old original yeah. claim. Yeah. And if you want to look on the roof, all this black, yeah. is all the original soot, the smoke from the candles. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So wow. when they had candles, we've actually found some old candles in here when we've been digging. Yeah. In the belly drives, because that was a, a drive they used to lay on their belly. Yes. And so yeah. basically they dig, push yeah. it back with their feet. Yeah and then they'd go along in the dark, and as soon as they hit something sound like glass, then they'd light a candle, yep. and then, but otherwise they're doing it in the dark. Yeah, I remember my dad used to do that when he was up, yeah. lived up the three mile. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. but yeah, I, I couldn't imagine doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be a pretty cost of a bit, night. A bit tight for me too. Yeah, I'd be a bit worried doing it in the dark. But you can see like the roof here, the drop in it's on a big fault line. Yeah. So across there, yeah, it's on an angle. It's on a big angle that drops down. Yeah. And it keeps going up and up and up. As you can see through this drive here. Yeah. The roof keeps going up. Yeah, yeah. And so it's a big face. But I haven't got anything at all that way. So. So pretty much when you've got fault lines and and um, levels dropping pretty quickly, it's you've a got you got a good, good chance that the you more fault smoke. lines you got, like if you come up through here, you'll see. All these little lines that go through the roof, like here, yep. that's a fault line. Yeah. Yep. So whenever you've got a fault line, you can see where it goes. Yep. That's where the silica over the years have run down. Yep. And then when it gets to a hard bedding plane, that's when it levels out and that's when you start getting yeah. your level. So, yeah, okay. but the more, like there's another fault line through here, yep. the more faults, Z faults, A faults, <laughs> all that you've got, um, the better chance you have got of opal. Yep. Yep. And that's the opal clay level that's there. Bearing, that's the but as level. you can see, we've been having a gouge in there because we've got some beautiful stuff just there. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> beautiful stuff there. Nice. So, but eventually I want to prop and take this all out here because this is carrying, carrying good. Colour. Yeah, carrying really good colour. Yeah, fair enough. And there's enough room around here to, to prop because it's not really a big ball. Right? No, well, that's why I've kept my drives nice and narrow at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this here, this is a real good band here. Yep. You can see there's pots through it. Yep. Through it, a little bit through there. Yeah. But that's a really good band, and anything that's bandy like that is yep. normally carrying. Yeah, okay. So. Awesome. But yeah, you can see the level there. 
See that band there? Yep. And it's broken back to the natural roof. Yeah, so it's solid. And they, solid yeah, they dug in underneath it. So yeah. that's the level there. Oh, that could hold, hey. Which is that level. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so they've gone underneath it. Oh, I need to get this dirt out. Yeah, it's um, a <clears throat> big job, <laughs> yeah. breaking these big boulders up. Absolutely. But the problem is too, it also can carry in the sandstone, yep. and there's bands that come in and out. Yep, yep. So, and you just got to be careful, because the band could be, you know, a millimetre thick, then it open up to a couple of inches. True. Which carries knobbies. Yep. But they yeah, seem... Fair enough. And, um, Dave, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's our worm farm. <laughs> As you can see... In there, if you dig down, oh, it's, oh, it's nice and it's good worm castings and that. We keep them underground because it's nice and cool. Yeah. And what we do, we'll take that back yep. and make pot and mix and stuff out of it, yeah, nice. and then bring it back. And every now and then, we come down and feed them. And then you've got worm juice there for your garden. Oh, lovely! Yeah. So this is our little, <laughs> that's our little worm farm. <laughs> but it's good. We did have the other one, but it's at home at the moment because yeah. we took it home to harvest the worms. Yeah, right. You uh, cook them up to eat them? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> People think they're getting black spaghetti, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kang kangaroo meat and worms. And so you've got another shaft here, which I think we saw last time. Yeah, if you go down, I've dug, I've connected them up through still, so I've yeah. done much more. I've got a little bit of colour down there, but it's not really worth, yeah. worth the hassle of doing it. Yeah. So there's another level down there. Another level. But we found knobbies down there yeah. in that band. Yeah. yeah. I come around with the rickshaw one day yeah. and I hit the wall and we heard this chinky noise. Mm. And anyway, Trav and Sarah are down there and yeah. dug a pocket of knobbies out right down there. Oh, so you've got to be careful. Colour? Yeah. It had like a pin fire pattern. Oh, yeah. But um, you've got to be careful because it makes down there. So what I've been told by another old miner yeah. was I should go deeper in the floor here. Uh, and have right, a look okay. through the floor. Yep. So I was thinking about going back to where the hoist is yep. and digging the monkey down yep. and then coming down another two feet into the floor and just running the floor right out again. And just to see, because yeah, them nobbies. They yeah. were healthy nobbies. Yeah, yeah. they were good, good nobbies. And I wouldn't mm -hmm. have found them unless I hit them with a rickshaw. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have known Isn't they were that there. funny? It's just, you just don't know where it's gonna be, do you? No, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Like it makes in that band and makes in that band and then you've got your sandstone between it. <clears> and that's what they did in here. That sandstone there, they thought that was their roof. Yeah. So they went in underneath it and took all that, but that's why they've left that. So they've yeah, left all the... They messed up. And that's the actual better level that carries. Yeah, right. Yeah, it carries. According roof. to the guys next door? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so they say so. Yeah. I'll find out. Yeah, fair enough. But this is an old open cut here. That's an edge of an old open cut that's been done from the surface. Is it really? Yeah, that's the edge of an open oh, cut. I thought it was just a shaft. No, I dug up, yep. as you can see, yep. kept going up, but it's yep. actual old open cut. That's the edge yeah, of the yeah. open cut. Gotcha. And wow. lots and lots of money come from in that open cut. So, and then nice. that way there, there's another open cut. So basically, a couple of my edges of the claims. Yep. Is virtually edge open cut three edges. Yeah. So I can dig until I hit the open cut. Yeah, right. So. And uh, they obviously open cut because the there was good opal right yeah. to the border. Yeah. So uh, there is a good chance. You have good chances here, huh? Yeah, good chances. Mm. So this is just a that's an old square shaft hole. This one. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Which that's really not a. a pillar anymore because no it's not gone. a pillar because basically it's just be in behind that you can see where it goes down through yeah so there's no so i wanted to go this way and keep digging yeah just to see what happens but then yeah it goes to the edge of an open cut yep. and this stuff here this purple stuff that bands yeah that produces good stuff yep. as well wherever you get that real purpley bandy stuff yep yep along that there that produces pretty good you can see we've had a gouge in there yep and that purple stuff's good. Yeah, awesome. And then over there, that's that purple blocky stuff. That also oh, produces. Yeah, that purple blocky yeah. stuff. Yeah. If you get a pick and have a look in there, yep. yeah, it's amazing what you see there. Yep. The same as that there. You can see we've had a pick. Yeah, nice. Oh, well, if we get the pick out, where can we have a good little bit of a go? You spin around and around and around in a circle with your hand out wherever you stop, that's it. Wherever your finger's pointing. So wherever your finger's pointing to, oh, there's a gecko down there. Down the hole, drops down the hole. 
and so you've just got to be careful. I've got a nice little red stone from here actually. Did you? Yeah, nice little red stone. Oh, it's really nice. Soft, soft oh, it's dirt. good easy digging. And so when you put all this stuff in the agitator, There's a bit of trace coming in. Yeah. A little bit of tracy stuff. Yucky. got to be careful you don't get your hand, it hurts. Oh, it's, there's, a there's, a bit of a, there's a bit there in the wall, purple. Yeah, purpley, just up in there. So basically, yeah, that's all yeah. So you're going gently, aren't you, Dave? So yeah, just, just in case there's something decent, something, something behind it as well. Don't break it into. Yeah, that's what they call a flat knobby. So, put your light on it if I can. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, if you want, you can just chip the edge off it. See if there's any colour. Yeah. There's your silly light there. It's a bit of purple in it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's just in this bandy stuff here. And then if you keep another. Keep going back. You can hear it in there. Yeah, hear that crunching sound. Sounds like glass. Yeah. Yeah, that's another bit. Yep. Goes all the way through. Looking good. Yeah, no, it is fun. Is this that, that hope? You know, that, well, the, that the possibility. The best fun about it is at the edgy when you tail out. Yeah. Because you just don't know what's coming out. Yeah, that's like true. It could be like a Christmas tree, bobbles running down, or it could be nothing. Yeah. So. It's, it's just like when you're going fishing. I mean, when it's sitting on a wall here is so much cooler. Imagine just finding that one yeah. beautiful stone. One piece. Rather than digging it all out and washing it, which is it really nice found. to see. But to see that one piece. Yeah, that I did that. I did that probably here somewhere. Yep. When I was belling it out, there was yep. one piece and I just yeah, come out and it's a nice big blue green bit and a lady sissy bought it, yep. bought it off me. It was absolutely amazing just to see it. It's like, wow, yeah. where's, the, where's the other one? That's very good. But it was a good stone. Yeah. But yeah, as you say, the excitement of seeing it in the wall and yep. you digging, you're the first one there to get it. Yeah. And That's nobody cool. else is there. Yeah. yeah. So. It's exciting. But yeah, what I'm listening for, as Dave says, Listening for the chink. Did you hear that? That little chink. That means that there's silica. It doesn't necessarily mean there's opal, but there's silica in the dirt. Yeah, a little bit of opal there. A little bit of purple in it. Yeah. And when you're doing this, you've got to do it. Be ever so careful about scraping. We use the flat blade more than the pointy blade because you can stick that straight into a knobby and smash it. Where you, with the flat blade, you scrape along the dirt and you're only taking little slivers off at a time. So um, you, if you do hit a knobby, you're not gonna actually break it or smash it into pieces. Isn't that right, Dave? Yeah, you can just take a little side off and it just shows you then if not, yeah, if you put the point into it, yeah, it makes a nice chip jar. <laughs> Definitely. There should be something, in, you'd think there'd be something in that. Yeah. Nice chocolate. The next type of opal mining is a larger style of opal mining. We join Sebastian. We have to do a safety induction. We have at the moment here, if there's four claims. Yep. As government laws get more and more strict, each miner, if they want to bring a guest out, have to do a safety induction to teach everybody all of the precautions when going onto a mine site. The general public are not allowed in a mining area whatsoever 
and you can be prosecuted if you're found in those areas. You can only enter a mine site if you're invited by the miner themselves. Just been on the yellow mm -hmm. agitator. Um, first aid kit and fire extinguisher is in that youth. Yep. And here we have a. Once we've been read all the safety precautions, we can go down into the mine where the real action happens. You have some torch or something? You have some yep. lights? Yep. yep. Okay, so I, I go down, I call out, and then. Yep. No worries. So this, oh, this is your big ballroom. So that's the big ballroom. Yeah. There's still some pillars in there. Yeah. They will be probably all right, but they're too dangerous too to take. Too dangerous, yeah. Because you need natural pillars and you need secondary support, what we use here. We use yep. props here. Yep. Um, yeah. And you found, yeah. obviously found some opal here, otherwise you wouldn't have ballroomed it. Yeah, it was a little bit around here. Yeah, that's good. Mm. And this over there is the fallen area. So there's signs up there and tape. Yep. You can't go there. You know, oh, it's so a lot of ground. ground. Yeah. So, so we not Don't go over there. there. There's another one of our friends here. Green oh, frog. a little green tree frog. He normally sits on the blower pipe, like, you know, it doesn't go away when I, when yeah, I walk. Really? He yeah. sits there and holds it. Everything ah. is vibrating. <laughs> ah, that's so cute. Very cool. That's where the blower pipe comes down. It's where all the dirt goes up that way. Two hydraulic hoses to drive the hydraulic digger. Then the oh. control cable and the 12-volt uh, power supply for a couple of lights. When I yeah. finish off and they're still warm, so they try to get... <laughs> it was pretty cool there. They're pretty docile yeah. when they're here. So Sebastian was saying that these pipes are hydraulic and they're warm. So if there's ever a snake in the, that's fallen down the claim, it'll cuddle up to the hydraulic hoses. So he's saying that they're going to be along here if they're anywhere, so they can get warm. <laughs> that is one long drive. Wow. That's one long drive. Yeah, yep. maximum I can go. Yeah. So. Wow! 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 A bit of structure here. We have like not a really good roof here. Yeah. So I have to watch that. Where we moved from here, there's like a little slack going up. Yeah, okay. So that, it's still. You want to be careful of still, it. It's still pretty alright, and I am away yeah. from there. Yep. Um, the whole thing here gets a good structure. Yeah. Now, this is all good mixture, this is a lot of clay here. Okay. But that's what we want. We want action, we want. We want movement. Yep. In the dirt, it's yeah. Different. Very cool. All right, better get going, huh? Yeah. Get, get a bit noisy. Yeah, it will be a bit noisy. As you know. So that sound there was the hopper, was it? It was the hopper, yeah. Dropping down. The light came on, and yep. I know it's full. Ah. Then I have to. Very cool. The hopper is where all the dirt goes to when it gets sucked out of the ground. It gets held there until the suction is let go, and then it falls into the truck. Sebastian has now driven his drive as far as his machinery can possibly go. So he now has to drill another hole in order to keep driving along this drive. So he has to take measurements and compass readings to figure out where he's going to drill the hole up top. He has to get the drill hole right in the middle of the tunnel 
and if you were to ask me to do something like that, I'd measure twice and cut once, or is it measure once and cut twice? Uh, whatever it is, I don't think I would get it exactly right. Sebastian has a background in engineering, so he's built most of his machinery from scratch. It takes a unique type of human being to be able to mine out here in the outback. If you get a breakdown, you need to be able to fix it yourself because there's nobody for hundreds of kilometers. And to get someone out here to fix something is very costly. So Sebastian has measured out on top of the surface whereabouts he should be putting the drill. And now we wait and drill. To find this patch of opal that Sebastian has found, he had put over 4,000 holes down around the Jag Hill area. That's a lot of time and effort before making any money back. That's the game of opal mining and what makes opal so rare. Every single hole that Sebastian puts down, when he gets close to the level, he'll always check to see if there's any trace at all. It's smoko time, so I thought I'd catch up with where Sebastian's at and what his plans are for the future. So Sebastian, it's been, it's been quite a few years since we caught up down your mine and see where you're at. Mm, how's it going for you? <laughs> yes. yes, you can see I'm still here. Not mm. getting any younger. <laughs> it's still plodding around here. It's still the activity around in the field is pretty quiet at the moment. I think it's still the COVID. Yeah. COVID things people are, people are away. Yeah, okay. And but we're still plodding along, but that's now you know, I've been here you've been here a few times. We did some clips, it's still the same spot. Yeah. But it's getting pretty flogged out now, mm. pretty much gone. We have mm -hmm. one big subsidence in the middle here. Yeah. Like from here to the drill that is all collapsed. It was very heavily propped, mm -hmm. but it won't stay, stand up forever. Mm. So yeah. we can't go there anymore. They're so just going around the outside yeah. and see yeah. if we find some satellite pockets somewhere. Yeah, which there is a chance still, huh? Oh yeah, there's a mm. chance you get. Yeah. You probably have maybe 30, 40 drag loads with nothing and then suddenly mm. being three or four, mm -hmm. you have a pocket there and they can make up for the others. You know, yeah, so. yeah, fair enough. Yeah, there's two, two scenarios. Yeah. There is one, the production is down, so I reckon the market needs a, a lot more production. Yeah, yeah. If people finding finding stuff, of course, a low low grade portion color that's moving pretty well, mm. but the, as a full time miner, you, you can't rely on that. It's, no. not, it's not enough no. to keep the wheels going, you need the better stuff. Yep. And for the better stuff, with all the COVID, a lot of our wholesalers. They, yeah, they couldn't go to the shows, mm. you know, you have to go out. Yeah. You know, some of the wholesalers, they do 10, 15 shows a year internationally. Mm. That didn't happen. Of course, their turnover is then running on 10, 15 percent. Mm -hmm. The world is <laughs> the world is angry for it, but... Yeah, yeah, for sure. But the produ production is part of it. We get a lot more new blood in, mainly with the Opel Hunters. That's mm -hmm. a pretty popular thing, you know, if it's all true or not. That's a different thing, what they show, <laughs> but it definitely yeah. brings brings people in. They want to have a go. Yeah. So, tourism was pretty good during COVID. Mm. So a lot of people who used to do overseas holidays, they bought themselves a caravan or a camper. Mm -hmm. Came out here, they cashed up. So the local, local trade did really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did the same for a camper. Yeah. <laughs> so, <coughs> Yeah, otherwise we need new fields, you know, the government government regulations getting stricter and stricter. Yeah. 30 years ago when I started here, you know, you put four pegs in the ground, you could do whatever you wanted, so, mm -hmm. sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. And now they're really tightening down to the really detail of everything, you know, with regulations and legality of everything. Taking the romance out of the 
whole game, really. Taking taking a lot of the Romans out, you know, for mm. the cost, entry cost. When I came here, it was fifty dollars a claim. Mm -hmm. So the, the could be the battle of the people who didn't have any money. They could go and say, I go and be the miner or I help somebody for half a day get fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. The afternoon you can pay, you look around, you pick a claim. Mm -hmm. There's a hole there, and you could start mining. Yeah, for it's sure. It's completely different now. You have yeah, and the costs now to pick up a claim it costs you around thousand dollars registration for the first year, mm -hmm. including bond. Yep. And. And then you need you need all safety course, and mind management course, environmental awareness course. Yeah. All of that. So it could take you by the time you wanted to start mining here, there's yeah. a few people around, it took them more than six months mm. to get it all in. Mm -hmm. to get them courses done, you know, they have to mm. line ups and waiting times. Yeah. Yeah, the thing if you if you on Opel is still fantastic here. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah, I mean I see I see uh, different um, scenarios just being up here for this week um, some people are really looking up and really happy and cheerful and other people are you know getting older as they and harder to to work out in the mines and stuff like yeah. that and a lot of the opals now running out and they're finding it tough so there's there's a balance of all sorts of there's all sorts of influences there the, yeah. the, the full cost you know the full mm. cost is now Killer. that's nearly that's definitely double than it was like five years ago yeah and yeah. that you know when you run machinery like that stuff here it, mm. it but yeah. if, if you scale down but then you haven't got you know moving the dirt mm. you know, so if you yeah. want to go in you have to do it it's just part of the cost yeah and then you have to work it out if it's worthwhile or not mm. and drilling going in with a nine inch drill prospecting for a new a new spot um, I'm seeing a lot of people doing it nowadays, and there's not as many patches being found as there used to be. Yeah, because we are we putting the measuring stick on the like the cook room, mm -hmm. and there was like in the late 80s, early 90s, yeah. Yeah. there was just one field after the other. The yeah. drilling rigs came in, yeah. and now people still go out. You know, the good, the bigger patches are all found. Yeah, there is smaller ones in between. They yeah. could be still very good. Yeah, but you know, it's like a needle in the haystack. Yeah, to find them. And so there's a lot, a lot more drilling activity on leg, you know, yeah. compared to. Yep. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Have a bite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they add flavour, it's all right. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's still worth it for somebody new who wants to start mining? Definitely. To have a go? Definitely. So, mm -hmm. You know, you can go around, there's different ways, you know, the, I think I prefer the web is a drilling rig, mm -hmm. go and find. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of opportunities around, especially in the seamy areas, mm -hmm. like Raving and Gary Shipyard. There's a lot of claims get sold and bowed and you know, a mm -hmm. little bit of trace there. So I know some people they did really well with that. Yep. You know, some drillers go out, they drill some hole, they pack a claim, they have a look. Okay, there's material there, but we want something better. And then they sell it to somebody for the price of the you yeah. know of the claim and of the holes yep and and some did really well yeah you know? yeah yeah that's good that's that's good that there's still hope there mm. for people who want to start i guess if you were out the grow when you kind of just need to keep your ears and eyes and op open and um and and listen to people talking about where's where's good and where's not and eventually you'll find a claim that you know where it the run kind of runs. Yeah, you have to get the information, you have to try mm. to get to know yeah. people and find their trust. Yeah. And they tell you things, you know. Trust is a massive thing. Then try, try here, try there. Yeah. Is that a hard thing for a new person to gain? Trust? Yeah. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah. It depends yeah. on the person too. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Mm. I remember years ago when we did the video last time and uh, a few years later after that video went out there was this guy that was running down the street um, Justin, Justin <laughs> just wanted to say hello um, since you did that video with Sebastian I've made, I've changed my whole life I've come out to Lightning Ridge with my family mm -hmm. and I think he started doing some work with you guys somewhere mm, yeah. <laughs> That's quite yeah, yeah, that was Michael yeah, yeah. Yeah. I came with it, and then he had a go, but he had maybe different expectations. Yeah. So he's not open mining anymore. Yeah, fair but enough. But he had a really good go. Good go. That's all. That's what's important. 
Ik ga een keer. Ja, is een vriend hier de ons ook altijd hier 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 nou was een vriend of mijn hier. Van de bureau daar iets aan heel tijdjes. Dus dan is het ah, en only keep my mining, my graving stuff going. Ja. Want dat zelf dat. En dat was een really goed keer, goed tikke, goed blauwe. En daar worden vinden veel people worden vinden waiting for them. En daar is een vriend die wanted to become opel miners, they living in the neighborhood, they really good blokes. Yeah. And they just, they were a bit cashed up. Yeah. They just sold the house. And then I said to them, you, you guys better come up and give me a hand, we have to get the gear out. Yeah. And then, when they got the gear out, you know, they got to know each other, and then, and then that fellow said, yeah, I want to sell the gear, and then the other said, yeah, I, I was meant to buy one. So mm -hmm. they did the deal. Mm. You know, so they were at the right spot at the right minute. Mm. If they wouldn't have come out to give me a hand, You know, to, to shift the gear for my friend. Yeah. They wouldn't have got that. There would have been another yeah, few people would have been waiting for that. Yeah, fair enough. It is, it is about timing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I still think there's there's a, the odd claim around town that has been maybe a little bit forgotten, but not worked. Um, that is owned by some people that may have lapsed. You know, there's still mm -hmm. that chance of finding changes, something. Yeah. 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 I know. Um, One of the, oh, I won't mention any names, but one of the guys who's been successful around here um, took out the drilling lease around the ridge and found a nice patch maybe 10 years ago, five, 10 years ago, and a really good patch that was missed many, many times over. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've been in the game now for more than 30 years mm. and I never worked around town. <laughs> I've always been in the Kukurun here, Gravin. Mm. You know, and I always thought I should look at a town, it would be so much easier, you know, mm. just down the road, mm. you go home for a cup of coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I never did it. Mm. It's maybe something for later on, like half retirement. Yeah. Or closer to home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still think there's some stuff there available. Yeah, like in the old fields, there's some really good quality. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's like the stone that was found under my dad's shed where he lived. Yep. Yeah. That stone was beautiful. It came from town. Pretty much. Yeah, when I found that field here 20 something years ago, when, it, when the first Opel hit, hit the market, they all said, wow, this is the, the quality and the thing. We haven't seen that since the Six Mile. Six Mile is a thing in town. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful open like Six Mile. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, when this claim was really producing big knobbies with colour bars, wasn't yeah. it beautiful? Oh. Hmm. It'd be good to have a few of them now. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been down your mine and you're doing a prospecting drive into some virgin ground. Yep. And it's one of the longest drives I've ever seen. <laughs> and I didn't think a blower could suck that far. Yeah, I, that's actually, I was pretty lucky. I, if I built a blower 20 years ago. Yeah. And then after 20 years there was a little bit wear and tear. Mm. So I refurbished some of the pipes, some of the fan mm -hmm. and the thing and changed a few things around. You learn with experience over the thing, you make the pipes a bit bigger, mm -hmm. the fan a bit different than the old one. Mm. And it came really it came really nicely together. Yeah, nice. Instead of doing 20 meter drives, now I can do 30 meter drives. Fantastic, uh, you get that extra suction. Yeah. yeah. Remember when I did some mining? It was a very, very small time, but short time, but I didn't really know much about mechanical mm. stuff. And um, we knew how to use the jackhammer and the blower and the digger, but we didn't, if anything broke down. Uh, back then it was really quite nice that people around us said, yeah, we'll give you a hand, I know what to do, and mm. we'd go and find the part and they'd help us change it, which is a really nice thing about Lightning Ridge is that... Yeah, people try to stick stick together. They work together. Yeah, somebody has a problem and then... Yeah. Will help out. Yeah. 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 I just we just getting ready for the Easter. Yep. And there was the Easter. We have the one of the activities there is the Manus challenge, where people basically can do some shuffling competition and strength yeah. test and yeah. things like that. It was pretty popular. <laughs> yeah. So I always helped out, and now the fellow who actually organized it here has a bit, few health issues. Mm. He can't do it anymore, so I took yeah. it on. I'm seeing a lot of that. And we were just, you know, yesterday, yesterday afternoon we had a meeting. We went down to the pub and just went through the paperwork, what we need, and you know, it's a static display of mining machinery. 
and that's what I don't know where we get all that stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. So then we went there, and it was, you know, everybody who was in there said, oh, what are you guys up to? They said, yeah, yeah, we're getting for Easter Saturday, we need that and that. I said, yeah, I can bring a burger, I can bring a hoist. So nice. we got we got a lot sorted out over a couple of beers yesterday that's awesome. afternoon. That's awesome. Yeah, that's well, it's, it's really important for a town like this to, to you know, bring in the tourists and I don't know, those, the big dig is always fun. Um, they're always having those competitions, the wheelbarrow yeah. races or wheelie bin races. They're good fun. Yeah, they that's fun. always good. Brings a lot of people when, in. Um, when you think about it, that you know, that's why Opal's worth so much is because it's so hard to find. Um, but back in the Cochrane days, when the Cochrane was, like you said before, was just that you could find another field, find another patch. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was everywhere. It was booming, you know. There was that much opal around that it created a craze across the world. And so there was people buying lots of opal at the time. Yeah, because that's the, that's the thing, you know, the, normally you go by demand and supply. Yeah. In opal here, it's, it's the opposite way. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of supply here. Everybody wants to have it. Yeah. If the supply is a little bit less, then people can swing. You yeah. know, the chulas, they can swing into other colored gemstones. Yeah. That's exactly they, what they happens. They can go around and say, yeah, because it's much easier to get sapphires for us. Yeah. And the important thing is too, I think we have to do a lot of education for younger people mm. to get in and get comfortable with opal. Yeah. Opal is different. Yeah. Setting that's, it in that's, jewelry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's when I go to, to, I did a few shows myself and I always have like a dot sale is a box of cheaper stones. Yeah. Like thirty dollar. Fifty dollar, eighty, hundred, or something, yeah, yeah. and that is basically to encourage younger people. They yeah, had yeah. good success with that in Europe. Yeah. They, you know, there was students came in. They did like a TAFE course or a apprenticeship with goldsmith or jeweler, mm-hmm. and then they suddenly they could make a connection. They said, "Ah, oh, we know that he speaks our language, you know, and, yeah, we, yeah. and we can get it from there." And they're buying smaller stones, mm-hmm. and this is an apprentice from today. Yep. They are the business owner from tomorrow. Mm. You know, in ten years' time, some That's of exactly them they right. they may be good designers, or they have their mm. own their own thing. If they're comfortable with opal, mm. then they encourage people to buy opal as well. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's a yeah. shame we we haven't seen any opal at the moment, have we? We got no. Nah, we haven't. To show. We, we did it, you know. We, it was, I thought we have one when we were digging there. Yeah. <laughs> We've been trying. You know, trying our best, but it doesn't always work that way, does it? But it could be the next bite, but I can't do the next bite because I'm out of range. Now, so that's right. Yeah. Uh, that's why yeah. we're drilling a hole now and getting the blower over, and then I can go to another 30 meter drive. Move it again, yeah. yeah. Then it's I'm building the boundary, I think. It's quite a big operation for you, just a one-man band to. Um, yeah. To move the drill, get all those hoses, pipes down below. Oh, it's, it's... Um, yeah. And it's not just that, you know, there's a lot of, when you look over there, there's a lot of, like, machinery what we don't use at the moment. Yeah. Like, there's a washing plant over there. Yeah. And that's basically, you know, we had that for years and years. Mm. And then, but I got a bigger one now, so I only take the drive key out, the gearbox, the diesel motor. Mm. And then, then the rest is available if somebody wants, wants mm. to get it and fix it up. Mm. But that size is too small for me now. Yeah, yeah. The other enough. truck, there's a conveyor belt on. There's some... Yeah. Really nice people, they stole the belt and two rollers. <laughs> mm, <laughs> they needed it more than me, probably. <laughs> so you get that as well. Yeah, a lot of theft around yeah. here, yeah. It's pretty sad about that bit, yeah. anyway. And all of this all of this metal out here, it looks like it's been close to the ocean, like it's been near salt. So what I'm thinking is the ground's really corrosive. Yeah, the ground is corrosive, yeah. yeah. Very corrosive. Yeah. Yeah. Normally you think out here it's dry. Mm. You should, people love it here to store like, you know, mm-hmm. vintage cars and things like that. Yeah. But if you get in contact with Opel, Opel dirt, it's abrasive, mm. yep. aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Acid in there, salt. You can see why all the old... So you have to see machinery and stuff like that feeder, yep. what they have in front of the digger now. That has to come out now because it needs refurbishing, you know, yeah. there's a few yep. things that are just worn away. Yeah. And but that's your heavy, and run machinery, there's always be on tear. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sebastian's drive to find Opal and positive outlook on life is needed to be able to survive in this harsh climate. He's a hard worker, a smart businessman, and a good friend. So it's time to head back to town 
to the office to show you what I've bought for the week in rough opal and cut stones. <laughs> Did you get the mozzie? <laughs> uh, so here we are in Lightning Ridge, in the office in Lightning Ridge. And um, I really wanted to take you on the journey of me buying these opals. And I bought a really nice assortment of stones. But the problem is that I need to keep um, every person I buy from confidential so people don't know where the opal comes from and people don't know um, who who is mining and who is actually finding opal so it's a very important thing about Lightning Ridge and it's about confidentiality and you don't want to give people secrets away so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to share any deals with you but what I can do is I can share with you what I've bought and I'm pretty happy with what I bought this time it's pretty amazing so Firstly, I bought this really cool parcel of seam opal. It's a bunch of rubs. Um, and there's some really, really beautiful green blue stones in there. A um, couple of red stones. There's a big 20 carat stone here. It's going to be beautiful, but I'm going to chop it up. It's going to be a very pretty piece. But if you look through the whole parcel, you can see that there's, there's green oranges. There's nice color on color as well, which is awesome for the grow and fields. Um, there's some really nice pattern, a bit of flagstone, there's some broad flash, a little bit of chaff in some of them. Um, so yeah, really nice parcel. It's going to add up to a fair amount of money and I will be cutting all of these. These are very nice gems. Um, also I got myself my hands on some nice rough and this rough is also, it's knobby material. And we've got some really, really pretty gems inside. And we have a close up look at them. There's one knobby in here that really I've put a lot of money on and I would have had to, is this. And it's pretty much looks like a witch's hat knobby. And it has all of the really nice colors right around the whole piece. So the color bar runs straight through the whole thing. My dream, my, my goal is hopefully that this is going to be black inside so the value will be worth more um, and that's what I'm banking on for this whole parcel there's some really pretty little pieces like this P knobby with a big blue green color bar right through the middle um, that's going to be quite fun to cut there's a whole bunch of pieces that are nice green there's also another this um, big black knobby it's got some very nice green and red sun flash hiding in there it may show up as a little bit nicer color if I cut it. Also, I think I've got another Cracker Gem Crystal hiding away in one of these knobbies too. So a nice little parcel and I think we're going to do well. Fingers crossed. I haven't cut from this field for quite a long time. So um, I am hoping from memory that it's actually good. And one amazing piece that I've got that is actually from a friend of a very close friend of my father's and he come to see me uh, he's not very well at the moment and um, he said I've got a really nice stone that I've kept in my safe for many years just for um, just for a rainy day and he decided that when I come up he would show it to me first and I'm really appreciative of, it, of, of that and look at the stone, it is just absolutely magnificent and it's going to go in my collection once I've cut it. So uh, because it's got a lot of sentimentality around my father and his greatest friends that he's had in Lightning Ridge, this stone, along with quite a few others in my collection, um, are very sentimental because of that whole era. It means so much to me. And being, being an absolute killer stone is another very good reason why. I would want to keep it. But what I'm going to do, I will make a video, I will cut it on a video, and you'll all get to see a very nice close up of it um, being cut. And we'll talk about its pattern and its colors and everything at the time. So I hope you enjoyed this journey. There's been a bit of a mixture of everything um, mining types, different styles of mining, a few different catch ups on people that you've seen before. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. But we had a great time here in the ridge. So hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Yeah. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs>